Basically, when you take the time to track your marketing metrics, you can find the red flags, you can make tweaks, you can improve your marketing, and ultimately this will help your business grow because you have the analytical data to support things that are working as well as things that are not working. Hey there, you're listening to the Priority Pursuit Podcast, a podcast dedicated to helping small business owners and leaders to find, maintain, and pursue both their personal and business priorities so they can build lives and businesses they love. I am your host, Kelly Rice, and today I have a question for you. And I have a feeling that many of you uh, won't want to really answer this. But the question is, are you tracking and measuring the results of your marketing efforts? And if you are, wonderful. However, as someone who has been working with small businesses for more than two decades, I can tell you that most small businesses, even the ones who prioritize having an effective marketing strategy, fail to complete this critical step of tracking and assessing their marketing performance. And actually, this is a problem because if you want your marketing to help take your business to the next level, you need to know what's working and what isn't so you can invest your resources wisely. You can make adjustments accordingly and ultimately experience the business growth that you deserve. So um, in this episode, I'm going to throw a lot of marketing jargon at you and it might feel overwhelming, but the fact of the matter is, is that you need to keep a close eye on these numbers or have someone like a marketing agency or a fractional CMO do it for you. Um, And also, I know that this is a lot of information to remember. While you can absolutely take notes, we also will be sure to include a link in this episode's um, coinciding blog post um, in the show notes, which will include definitions for most of the metrics that we're going to talk about, plus a few more um, that might be helpful. So, okay, if you guys are ready, we're going to talk numbers. Hey, I heard all of those groans. We're not going to groan today. We're, we're going we're gonna to do this together. So the first and foremost, the first thing that you need to do is to be sure that you're tracking your revenue and profitability metrics. This simply includes your gross revenue and your net profit and your marketing expense ratio. So if you're using um, something like QuickBooks or a similar accounting system, or you work with a book- bookkeeper, you should easily be able to find these numbers um, in the profit and loss statement. And as a quick note, I'm really glad we're having this conversation at the beginning of the year, because in theory, your numbers from last year should be finalized so that you can easily look at your profit and loss statement from last year and get a good handle on many of the metrics that we're going to discuss in this episode. So, okay, let's get back to the revenue and profitability metrics. So first, your gross revenue is the total number that your business brought in over a year, over a quarter, or whatever time period that you care to assess. And at TreeFrog, we conduct at least quarterly reviews for both um, our clients and our agency, just to give you a heads up. But it's also great to go back and look on a monthly basis and compare it to you know, the month prior or a quarterly or whatever it is doing. Um, but gross revenue is just the total number that your business brought in over a set amount of time. Then your net revenue is the total your business has earned after all of your expenses have been deducted, like payroll, your materials, your supplies, software, rent for office space, uh, taxes, or whatever other business expenses that you've um, acquired. So basically, this is what your business has left at the end of whatever time period left over. So gross is the total amount. Net is the amount that's left after you take out your expenses. So while your accountant and the IRS certainly want to know your gross revenue and your net profit, um, as a business leader, you also need to know your marketing expense ratio, which is simply the total marketing expense percentage in relation to your gross revenue. So in other words, Review your profit and loss statement, which should include an itemized number for marketing and advertising expenses. Then divide that number by your gross revenue to determine the ratio or the percentage that you're investing into your marketing. Now, just to give you a frame of reference for this number, so according to the U.S. um, Small Business Administration, small businesses wanting um, to see consistent growth should plan to spend between 7 and 8% of their revenue on marketing. In larger businesses, um, 
which for sake of this conversation um, are businesses that make between $5 million and $50 million a year, should invest at least 10% of their revenue into marketing. So as you calculate your marketing expense ratio, I want to encourage you to keep this data in mind. If your ratio is lower than these numbers, you may not be investing enough into your marketing to see true business growth. And if your ratio is higher, you may not be spending your marketing dollars wisely. So again, these are big picture numbers. Um, and we're going to get in to a little more nitty gritty numbers in a moment, but it is so important for you to know that you're, uh, to know your revenue and profitability metrics so that you can get a big picture view of the overall health of your business and your marketing, um, your marketing efforts. Right. Because again, we don't want to not be spending enough to grow and we don't want to be spending too much that we're not being effective. So next we're going, um, next you're going to want to assess your customer metrics in relation to your marketing efforts, which include your customer acquisition cost and your customer lifetime value. So now determining these numbers is going to require a little math, but if you have your profit and loss sheet in front of you and you know how many customers you've had over a period that you're wanting to assess, you should be able to determine these numbers fairly easily. So for the sake of this conversation, we're going to look at customer metrics from an annual perspective, but please know that that again, you can absolutely adjust this time frame, like to a month, to a quarter, to a campaign period or whatever other time period makes the most sense for you as you look at your own numbers. So first, your customer acquisition cost or your CAC, some people call it a CAC, you can call it whatever you want, is simply how much it costs to acquire a new customer. So to calculate this, you need to divide whatever you spent on marketing over the course of a peer uh, of the year or month or whatever you're, you're tracking by the number of new customers you acquired in that same time period. So for easy math purposes, let's say that you spent a hundred thousand dollars on marketing and you served 20,000 new customers this year. That would make your CAC or your customer acquisition cost $5. So that means it costs you $5 to gain that new customer, right? So please note that this number is going to vary quite drastically from small business to small business. So for example, like a, a commercial law firm is likely um, only going to take a handful of large, like time consuming clients on, on retainer, meaning the firm will really only have a few clients, but those few clients will make large investments. So the law firm will likely have a pretty high CAC. However, an online boutique may have thousands of customers who just buy an item or two and the result, their CAC will be much lower. So there isn't necessarily a right or wrong answer when you calculate um, your customer acquisition cost. However, this is an important number to know because it can help you determine if your marketing investments are delivering the results you need. So for example, if the boutique we discussed had a CAC of $50 and their average customer spending is only $30, there's off obviously some kind of marketing problem that needs to be addressed because they're spending more on acquiring a customer than what that customer actually spends. So in addition to determining how much money it takes to gain a new customer, it's also important to determine the customer lifetime value so that you have an idea of how much revenue each customer will generate for your business over time. So your CLTV is simply an estimate of the total revenue your business can expect from a single customer. So to calculate this, you simply need to multiply the average purchase value, which is like the average amount of money a customer spends in a single trans transaction. You need to multiply that by the purchase fr frequency, which is how often the customer um, could potentially make a purchase, and then by the customer lifespan, which is the average number of years the customer could continue to make purchases with you. So I know that was a lot. So here's an example. Let's say that you're um, an auto detailer and the most popular package you sell is $500 um, 
And most of your customers bring in their vehicles to you about twice a year. And you estimate that they will continue uh, patronizing your business for 10 years. So when you multiply these numbers, you can conclude that your customer lifetime value of your average customer is $10,000. And it's important to know both your customer acquisition cost, how much it costs you to get that customer, and your customer lifetime value, what they're actually worth to you in the long run, so that you can determine how much money you need to spend or you're actually willing to spend to gain a customer that will return to you again and again. For example, let's pretend that the auto detailers um, cost... um, their CAC is um, $25. Literally, you would be happy as a business leader to spend $25 in order to make $1,000 every year over the next 10 years, right? Like, so that's how you should be addressing and looking at these numbers. Okay, so far we've discussed some pretty big picture metrics um, that you need to know for the sake of revenue and profitability as a whole. And I hope that you guys are all still with me, right? Um, now we need to get into more marketing specific numbers and discuss growth and marketing metrics you should be tracking, including your lead conversion rate and your return on advertising spend. So to measure the success of your marketing efforts, you need to know your lead conversion rate, which is just the percentage of leads that become paying customers. Basically, you need to divide the number of paying customers that you have by the number of leads you received. So for example, if you have a thousand leads and a hundred of them purchase from you, your lead conversion rate would be 10%. Make sense? So now how you determine the total number of leads um, you have actually depends on your goals. So for example, if you host a webinar in an effort to sell your new online course, your number of leads would be the number of people who attend or watched the webinar. And if you do consultations before, um, before your clients actually invest in services, um, like kind of like what we do for the agency, you could calculate your leads by the number of people who scheduled a consultation with you versus the number of people that actually, um, signed a contract, right? So every small business's um, purchase process looks a little bit different depending on their offerings, but it is important to know your lead conversion rate so that you can both make projections for your business and also make adjustments if necessary. So here's another example. If very few leads are turning into paying customers, there's likely either a marketing or a customer service issue of some kind. So in addition to your lead conversion rate, you also need to know your return on advertising spend. And then like this number evaluates the effectiveness of advertising campaigns, whether they're annual or like a campaign by campaign basis. And they do this by comparing the revenue generated to the amount spent. I know this sounds very similar to the marketing expense ratio, but your marketing expense ratio is an overview of all of your marketing spending, while your return on advertising spend tells you how much revenue you generated for every dollar spent on marketing. And you can calculate your annual return on advertising spent, but more often than not, you're going to use this metric to calculate the revenue generated for a specific campaign or for marketing efforts that are put towards like a specific product or service, as opposed to looking at it on an annual basis. So for example, let's say that you own a plumbing company that wants to push water softeners in Q3. You spend $10,000 specifically marketing your water softener services, and you generate $50,000 in water softener sales. When you divide your revenue, the 50000 by your advertising budget, 10000 you can conclude that for every dollar spent on marketing, you were able to generate $5 in sales. So that's why this return on advertising spend is so important. And it's just a little bit different than understanding your uh, marketing expense ratio. What would you do with an extra 45 minutes every workday? That would save you 16 hours a month or roughly eight days a year. And over the course of your career, we're talking about over one year of your life saved all that time back. Well, many independent business owners spend far more than 45 minutes a day on administrative tasks. And with HoneyBook, you can get that time back 
and then some. HoneyBook lets you easily manage projects, contracts, invoices, scheduling, and client communication, saving you time and allowing you to better serve your clients. For a discount on your first year of HoneyBook, visit HoneyBook.com and subscribe with the code PRIORITYPURSUIT. 45 minutes a day adds up quickly. Use it to focus on what matters most. Many small businesses don't have an effective marketing strategy, and because of this, they try one tactic after another without seeing results. This not only prevents consistent business growth, it makes managing marketing efforts more difficult than it should be. As a marketing agency for small businesses, we understand how frustrating it can be when hard work doesn't deliver the results that you want. Because of this, TreeFrog has developed a proven four-step marketing system that will help any small business grow. On our website, you can also schedule a 30-minute discovery call to discuss working with TreeFrog to build a marketing strategy that will allow your small business to finally see the growth you've been working so hard to achieve. There's just a few more things that we really need to get through. So your lead conversion rate and your return on advertising spend are great tools to help you see the health of your marketing as a whole. But I now want to quickly kind of get into the marketing metrics that are important to track on a tool by tool basis. So for example, on your website, you want to be able to track these things. Uh, the total number of visitors your site receives over um, like a given time period. And again, you can determine whatever that time period is for you for your assessments. The number of new versus returning visitors your site's bounce rate, which measures the percentage of visitors who uh, leave your site after viewing only one page. Um, but it's important to note that depending on what your marketing campaign is, this bounce rate can vary dramatically. So if you're sending them directly to a product to purchase and they purchase it, great. You're going to have multiple pages because they they have to go through that site. So your bounce rate is going to be low. But if you're sending them to download an opt-in, that may be the only page that they go to. And then you might have a higher bounce rate because they're really not going anywhere else on your website because they got the thing that they wanted. So kind of pay attention to that. So again, you need to um, track your site's bounce rate, um, especially during campaigns. You also want to track your site's most popular pages in your organic search rankings, meaning where your website link uh, ranks on Google for your desired keywords. And if you have Google Analytics set up for your website, you can access almost all of this information with just a few clicks uh, via your Google Analytics account, or if you have some kind of program that you bring it in to assess all of your numbers. Um, this is not stuff that you should have to spend a ton of time on because um, if you have Google Analytics on your site, it's already there. If you don't have Google Al Analytics on your site, um, get it on there. There's a whole bunch of tutorials out there telling you how to actually do that. But Google Analytics then will track all of these numbers for you so that you can easily find them. So, but when it comes to email, um, here are the things that we need you to track. First is your average open rate. Um, second is average click-through rate, which is basically the percentage of recipients who click on a link within your email. Um, third is your conversion rate, which is the percentage of recipients who perform the desired action, like making a purchase or doing whatever you're asking them to do um, from your email onto your website. Um, and then fourth is your unsubscribe rate. So we need to watch your unsubscribe rate because if you have people jump and ship a lot, um, then you're not really giving them the information that they need, that they're wanting um, from email. Maybe it's too much. Maybe it's not enough. Maybe it's, um, they don't find value in it. Maybe you're spamming them with information that they don't really care about. So the unsubscribe rate gives you a lot of insights as to what you could be doing, um, better or differently within your email marketing. And then the last is your list growth rate. So are people, um, joining your list? Are they, um, uh, wanting your opt-ins? Are they, do they want your free discounts? All of these types of things. You need to look at how quickly and how much your um, list is growing. And then also on the reverse of that, looking about how much it is shrinking based on unsubscribes. So all of this information should be easily accept, um, accessible through whatever email marketing systems you're using. Um, and if you're not using email marketing, you should be using email marketing because it's one of the most effective um, marketing platforms out there. Um, but so for example, the one that we use, um, here at TreeFrog um, is MailChimp and we use it for both our clients and ourselves. So we can easily 
get this information and track it every single time that we send out an email. Um, but when it comes to content marketing, these are the things that you should be tracking. Your page views, your average time spent on a page, and then any engagement rates such as likes, comments, or shares um, that happen with your content. So both Google Analytics and your social media platforms should be able to give you all of this data. Now, for social media, it's important to document your follower count and growth, the engagement rate, your click-through rate, and the website traffic generated from your social media. And again, all of this information can be found in Google Analytics or your social media um, platforms as well. And then for paid media, um, which um, includes like social media paid ads or Google ads, you should be tracking these five things. Your return on your ad spend, um, which we discussed already in this um, episode, your click-through rate, your cost per click, and then also your ad impressions. So, and then chances are like, Whatever ad platform that you're using, they will make this information uh, readily available, but they also give you tons of other information. But these are literally the five things that you absolutely need to be paying attention to for your paid media. So, okay. Now, I know that I just threw a ton of information and a lot of jargon and a lot of acronyms and a lot of, a lot of, a lot of things to you in this episode. And like I mentioned before, if you'd like a list of everything we discussed um, with definitions and math equations and writing, visit the link in the show notes to find um, this episode's coinciding blog post, which details every metric we covered, um, plus a few more. So while we wanted to keep this episode as concise and helpful as possible, the blog post details um, each and every metric we um, we keep track of for our flywheel marketing and fractional CMO plans. So if you've made it this far with me, congratulations. I'm so proud of you. Um, but as a marketing agency for small businesses, the Tree Frog team and I are regularly asked questions like, what is a good click-through rate? Um, what should my cost per click be? And is my insert whatever metric that you want to talk about good? And the answer to all of these questions is honestly, it depends. In fact, it depends on several things. First, it depends on whether you have a high or low ticket offer. Um, And this isn't always the case, but in general, if your small business sells expensive products or services, you'll have fewer buyers and have to pay more per lead. But that's okay because with a higher ticket offer, you likely don't need that many more customers to be profitable. And the metrics we discuss are also going to be very pretty drastic um, from industry to to industry. So for example, the average email click-through rate for a boutique is likely going to be much different than that of like a veterinarian or um, a manufacturing company, right? So keeping this in mind as you assess your marketing efforts, I really want to encourage you to do a little Googling in terms of what these numbers tend to look like based on your specific industry, as this will help you better determine how well your marketing efforts are performing. So while I certainly want to encourage you to determine each and every one of these metrics we discussed, um, what do you kind of do with this once you have it, right? Like how many of us have developed spreadsheets and we're like, okay, we're going to track all these numbers. And then we have no idea what, how to analyze it or what we need to do with it. Right. Um, but again, you can get a full list of all the stuff that we've talked about in the blog post, um, with the link in the show notes. But the things that I really want you to take away today is that first and foremost, record these numbers. This way you can look back at it on a regular basis and make comparisons like year after year, quarter after quarter, or campaign after campaign, or whatever time increment that makes the most sense based for your business and your goals. And then with this data recorded, you'll be able to assess whether or not your marketing is improving and determine whether or not the changes are, um, the changes that you're making are actually working. Next, I want to encourage you to look through each of these numbers and compare them to industry benchmarks and address anything that isn't performing well. For example, you might discover that your email open rate is low compared to others in the industry. If that's the case, uh, maybe your subject lines aren't resonating with your audience, or you might find that your social media ads aren't performing well, which might suggest that it's time to start A-B testing your ad graphics or your copy. Basically, 
when you take the time to track your marketing metrics, you can find the red flags, you can make tweaks, you can improve your marketing, and ultimately this will help your business grow because you have the analytical data to support things that are working as well as things that are not working. So before we wrap up this episode, I do want to acknowledge the fact that the that tracking these metrics, uh, let alone adjusting your marketing, takes quite a bit of time. And I mean, it's an absolute minimum. You want to make sure that you're running these numbers once a year. Um, and again, depending on what you're doing, um, every quarter, every month, every campaign may be necessary, depending on how much information you need if you're trying to adjust your marketing results and if you're trying to grow. So that said, as a small business owner or a leader, we know that your plate is likely already full. So with this in mind, I want to encourage you to do two things. The first option is to assign this task to a member of your marketing team, assuming that you have an internal team. So often we see businesses with um, marketing teams that do a lot. However, they don't necessarily take the time to measure their results. Um, and this is a problem because if you want your business to grow, your marketing team needs to be tracking these metrics so they have the data to make wise marketing decisions. And the second option is to outsource these metrics. So for example, at TreeFrog, we conduct regular metric um, analysis and reviews for all of our flywheel marketing and fractional CMO clients. Um, and it depends again on their goals, on their, on their, um, on their businesses, on their campaigns of how often we actually go through and look at, look at the metrics and provide the reviews. But we run reports, we record these metrics and we present the results along with the improvement suggestions, if there are some, to our clients. This way, the busy business owners and leaders we work with have the data that they need to make informed decisions. And our team has the data we need to improve or tweak or do whatever we need to do to our clients' marketing efforts. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about our flywheel marketing or fractional CMO services, please visit treefrogmarketing.com or check out the link in the show notes. But regardless of who records your metrics, please remember that these numbers matter because if you want your marketing to be successful, you have to take the time to do these. Um, and we know that there's so many things, like there's so many things that you're doing. And I want to just express that. I know that we're adding more to your plate, especially as a small business owner going, oh my gosh, now I need to track all of these things. Um, but you need to do it so that you can invest your resources wisely. You can make adjustments accordingly. And ultimately, you can experience the business growth you deserve. So in case... That's all the math that you want for today. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Priority Pursuit Podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, we hope you'll take a moment to share it with your small business friends, to leave us a review on Apple Podcast, and that you'll join us next week for even more marketing boundary, priority-driven tactics that can be used to build a life in a small business that you love. <laughs>